This video is part one in our three part series on website development. In this video, we look at HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, the standard markup language for web pages. HTML elements are the building blocks of HTML pages and are represented by the less than and greater than chevron tags. HTML elements can have attributes that provide additional information about the elements. Attributes typically come in name value pairs. Web pages coded using HTML are read by web browsers, which then interpret the tags and render the page visually. At the time of making this video, HTML version 5 supported 107 different tags. The 18 you need to know about for your exam are shown on the screen now. HTML elements consist of start and end tags with content in between them. The actual document itself begins with the HTML and ends with a slash HTML tag. The main body of text begins with the body and ends with a slash body tag. In the example on the left, it's only the content that appears inside the body section, the yellow part, that is displayed when the web page is rendered by a browser. So let's actually have a look at a simple HTML document on the left, just shown in a plain text editor, and how it would appear when rendered in a web browser on the right. So we've said an HTML document begins with a HTML and ends with a slash HTML tags. You can see those on the left. As these are non-visual tags, the browser currently looks blank. Next comes the head tag. Now this is a container for metadata, essentially data about data. And this is placed between the HTML and the body tags. Metadata, as we've said, is data about the HTML document. So again, it's a non-visual element, so it's not displayed in the browser. The title tag defines the title of the document. The title must be text only, and it's shown in the title bar or the page tab. So we actually have a visual element here displayed by the web browser. The title tag is actually a required tag for all HTML documents. We now move on to the important body tag, and this defines the document's main text. It contains all sorts of things like headings, paragraphs, images, hyperlinks, tables, and more. There can only ever be one body tag within a HTML document. So now we're inside the body tag, we start to move to tags which can have a noticeable difference on the display in the web browser when the page is rendered. The H star tags, H1, 2 and 3, are used to define headings in order of importance and therefore size. H1 defines the most important heading, or H6 defines the least important heading. You should try and stick to some conventions. Only use the H1 tag once per page as a main heading. Try not to skip heading levels either. Start with a H1 and then for the next most important heading use H2 and so on and so forth. The P tag defines a paragraph. Now browsers automatically add a single blank line before and after the paragraph tag where they render it in a browser. One thing you'll notice here is just because in the text document on the left I have split that paragraph text over four lines, it's actually only appearing in two lines in the web browser and you'd have to scroll horizontally in order to see everything. That's because it's only splitting and starting a new paragraph when I start and end with the paragraph tags. The IMG tag is used to embed an image in a HTML document. Images are not inserted into a web page, but rather linked to a web page. 
the IMG tag creates a holding space for the referenced image. Now, the image tag is the first one we've indicated that requires some attributes, and there's two particularly need to be aware of. There's the SRC attribute. This stands for source, and it specifies the file path for the image to be used. And there's the ALT or alt alternative attribute that specifies alternate text for the image in the event it cannot be displayed for some reason. You should always try and specify the width and height of an image because if you don't, the page might flicker while the image loads. The A tag defines a hyperlink, which is used essentially to link one page to another. The most important attribute of the A tag is href, which indicates the destination the link is going to. By default, links will appear as follow in all browsers, unvisited links in blue, visited in purple and active in red. You can see here that the text text -E when clicked on is actually visiting a Wikipedia page about dogs. Next, we have the OL tag, which defines an ordered list. Now, an ordered list can be numerical or alphabetical. You can see here we're having a numerical list numbered one, two and three. Inside it, we use the LI tag to define each item in the list. And finally on the page, we have a UL tag. Now this defines an unordered list, so essentially a bulleted list. Once again, inside the UL tags, we're using LI tags to define each list item. Now of the 18 HTML tags you need to know about, we've covered 13 already in the previous example. The five left are link, div, form, input, and script. Now these tags relate to aspects of CSS and JavaScript, which are going to cover in their own dedicated videos next. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How does a browser display a web page using HTML? Now that's a very brief intro to HTML to cover what you need to know for the exam. If you've got a couple of minutes, pop your pen down and watch the rest of this video so you can discover how to learn a little bit more. So a complete list of all the available HTML tags can be found at the W3 school site. This website provides a complete online course where you can teach yourself HTML, CSS and JavaScript completely for free. It includes an excellent web-based code editor you can use to write HTML and instantly see what it looks like in a browser.